then a man should do. If all the men are dead in the world, all the Muslim men, and then if you ask me the question, I say, okay, maybe I've got no objection. But you have many men, alhamdulillah. So what the women, I've got no objection if the audience is only women. Then she can even uncover her face, she can even uncover her head and give a talk, give a lecture, no problem. Only females, because you know, Islam believes as far as possible segregation of sexes. So when it comes to giving news reading, there's bound to be various men who may not lower their gaze properly, who may not listen to the news properly. It will be wrong on your part to allow them to have that thing. So it's preferable that men read the news in these conditions. Hope that's the question. May we have the next question, please? Dr. Zahir Naik, Dr. Naik. Uh, my name is Mahbub Khan. I am from Mangalore. I am engaged in agriculture. So you have been talking uh, very concernedly about the uh, readership of the newspapers, non-electronic uh, media. Uh, hopefully, we have a situation, uh, our education system is so poor that uh, naturally we cannot expect any readership there. And as far as the English papers, very few English papers that are concerned, uh, in 1992 I remembered having uh, picked up a copy of uh, Islamic Voice that they had featured the death of uh, uh, Muhammad Asad. And that the feature, it was written that he was born in Australia. If the administration of a paper is lacking so much in the geography, as from Australia, they cannot make a difference as between Australia and Austria. It is, I mean, how can you uh, expect a non-Muslim to appreciate a paper? And the grammatical mistakes are, I, I'm sorry, um, uh, Dr. Nayak, uh, my question is not within the definition of a question. You may have to for, uh, bear with me for a few moments. Uh, please, uh, may I request you to because come to your question? Because you can, can, we can't hear No, clearly. no, the entire thing, entire, uh, entire lecture of today is, uh, I mean, what you call, centered upon the lack of, I mean, what you call, mass communica uh, communication, and we don't have the education uh, amongst the Muslims. It's a wonderful question, brother. The brother asked a good question that today in the Muslim Ummah we don't have proper education and we don't have proper training, etc. So my lecture is based on that. That's why I'm giving a talk to inspire. There may be certain philanthropists here or may see the cassette who may start having good education. And I've given a talk on Islam for children showing how to start schools based on the Quran and Hadith. How can you have good school in the modern time? Having the knowledge of modern world as well as Quran Hadith simultaneously. I've given talks for that also. The brother said that he read Islamic voice, Muhammad Asad, he is born in Austria that I know, but they mentioned by mistake Australia. How can they make a difference? The difference only of Austria and Australia, AL, is added extra. So, brother, do you know Times of India is supposed to be the best paper, correct, in India? Times of India. Brother, do you know or not? Times of India in English is supposed to be one of the best. Right or wrong? Yes, I appreciate it. Do you know, I find on the first page, minimum 20 mistakes, minimum. Let me give minimum 20 mistakes. Minimum 20 mistakes. A person should be trained to find out the mistake. I do know, even in times of Indian, first page only, minimum you'll find either spacing mistake, either comma mistake, either grammatical, and they have the best people in times of India. Less mistakes you have in weekly paper and monthly paper, I don't know. That doesn't mean I'm supporting Islamic voice. I'm not supporting. What I'm telling you, Alhamdulillah, with whatever limited thing he had, at least he's doing what you should say. I will start a newspaper. Inshallah, there will not be a single mistake. We Muslims have a habit of pointing at the finger. Oh, he's not doing it. I'm not blaming you, brother. I'm not blaming you. I'm not telling you are doing that. I'm giving the Muslim view. I'm not telling you are blaming. What we should do, we should say, okay, I will start a paper better than Islamic voice. Alhamdulillah. No problem. But if you can't at least support that paper, we should not pull each other's leg. What we are doing, Muslims are wasting more time. If I want a paper, what you should do? You should support that paper and then we'll make a new paper. We in IRF, we support the other Dawah organization. We don't say, oh, this Jamaat Islami is wrong, so I'll pull him down. This LF organization is wrong. Support everyone and you do Dawah. Because we are doing for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support all the organization, whatever is coming, support them and even you do. Don't pull each other's leg. Least you can do is stay neutral. Least. That itself is great. But Muslim organization pulling each other's leg, ah, this organization, I want to pull his leg, so that people will think I'm the best. When you will be best? Arre, when you support everyone, Allah will help you. If you get Allah's help, that's the best. And I do agree with the brother that today what we're lacking is basic education. How many institutes do we have today who we can call uh, excel in the field of education? Even if I have to send my son, who's about four years now, I doubt whether I send him to a Muslim school. 
We have Muslim schools in Bombay, but the level of education is atrocious. I'm sorry to say. I'm sorry to say. I know these people, they may be good people in the institution, but if you compare them with the missionary schools, their education is much higher. What do we do? If you feel that you cannot give a proper Islamic background to your school, yet put them in Muslim school. But if you're confident that you can give Islamic background at home and put them in missionary schools, and your son can do dawa in missionary school, then you can put them in missionary school. Otherwise, don't put. Don't put in missionary school. If you have confidence that you can give enough Islamic knowledge, the parents themselves don't know Islam. What will they teach their children? If you are confident enough that you can train your child enough about Islam and even do dawa in that school, then I've got no objection if he goes to missionary school. Otherwise. Put him in a Muslim school, even if the Muslim school standard is low. At least his Iman will be safe. Otherwise, he goes and becomes a doctor and goes far away from Islam. What's the use? So what we require, brother, now is institutions which are excelling in education, in modern education as well as deen together. Unfortunately, we have a segregation. The deeni madaris, those that teach Quran fiqh separately and those which teach modern education separately. Even Quran is modern. We require a striking balance between the both. Teach both simultaneously. There are very few such organizations in the world which teach both simultaneously. Islamic values, Quran, Hadith, Sharia, and the education which we learn in science and technology, etc. If we have this, and then if we excel our people in this field, inshallah this will not be there. And we have to train our people how to do proofreading is a technique. How to record mistake is a technique that when in journalism also, those people have done the course of journalism will realize that taking out mistakes is also a technique. So more experienced a Muslim is in that field, the paper will be better. Hope that answers the question. There's a question posed by a member of the audience saying that Islam is all, all, often made a target in the media, uh, mentioning that Islam is very intolerant and it's very fundamentalist. And uh, they mentioned that non-Muslims are not allowed in the city of Mecca and Medina, which are the holy sites of Islam. Why is this so? Why are non-Muslims not allowed in the holy city of Mecca? The question posed is that Islam is an intolerant religion, they are fundamentalists. Why aren't the non muslims allowed in the city of Mecca? Regarding that Islam are fundamentalists, etc., I've given the talk on is religious fundamentalism a stumbling block to the freedom of expression. It's a debate between myself and the other speakers. You can refer to that cassette. That cassette will give the answer in detail about fundamentalism, about terrorists, etc. Regarding the main question, that why aren't non muslims allowed in the holy city of Mecca? Why aren't? See, if you analyze that even an Indian, suppose I'm an Indian, and I'm an Indian, even if I have to go, in certain areas, I'm not allowed to go in India. Those are the cantonment area. You know cantonment, the military area? The government doesn't give me permission to go in that area. Though I am a bona fide citizen of India, yet the Indian government will not allow me to go in certain areas which are known as cantonment area. Those are special areas for those people who are well-versed and mainly meant for protecting the country and they're trained in that, etc. Other normal citizens aren't allowed. Similarly, Islam is for the whole world, for all the human beings. But the cantonment area of Islam, the peaceful area, what we call, is the Harmain, Makkah and Medina. Here, no one besides the staunch believers of Islam can go. That's the cantonment area. You cannot go without being a staunch believer. Otherwise, Islam is for all human beings. Not that we are against them. But Whenever you want to enter any country, you require a visa. If I have to go to America, to England, to Singapore, to Malaysia, I apply for a visa. And when I apply for a visa, there are certain questionnaires, certain questions I have to answer, certain things I have to agree with. For example, when I go to Singapore, it was mentioned in the form, immigration form, death to drug traffickers, death penalty to all those who deal with drugs. I cannot say, oh, this punishment is very harsh. I don't agree with this. If you don't agree, no entry in Singapore. So if I have to enter Singapore, I have to agree that if I am caught with drug, I will be hanged. Death penalty. No option. If you don't agree with that law, don't enter the country. So if you want to apply for a visa, you have to agree with the laws of that country. Similarly, if any human being wants to enter Makkah or Medina, you have to apply for a visa. The visa for Makkah and Medina is to say with your lips verbally, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon the messenger of Allah, and no one can prevent you from entering there. Uh, Brother Sundar Rao is keen on asking Dr. Zakir Naik, why do Muslims call Almighty God Allah? 